<laughs> the future does not issue certificates or plaques or degrees or diplomas or anything like that. But we probably should, given what you just said. Like if I had an honorary <laughs> degree to give to you, I would, Chris, because you did everything you're supposed to do. So the, the next part, which I want to explore with you, has a lot to do with our mutual friend, Mo Ismail, who you met and then started a business with. And then ultimately you guys decided to separate ways. You seem to be a different person. You seem more outgoing. You seem to be more comfortable in your own skin. There's a quiet power and confidence I'm feeling from you. What are three things that that hard breakup created for you? Like, how did you transform? Do you recognize those things? The first thing and the one thing that I immediately took away from the breakup, Mo and I were talking and we were like, we don't know how to split the company. We don't know how to do financial, who gets what camera gear, what gets what. I had one request. I want the YouTube channel. We have 300 subscribers. It used to take me 55 minutes to record a three and a half minute take on our YouTube channel because I was, it wasn't me. I've always kind of done public speaking to a degree, you know, sang in choir, I did speeches like, but the moment you put that camera lens in front of me and the potential to reach thousands, if not millions of people, I would always freeze. So it gave me the headspace, the confidence, to immediately be like, I'm going to make this social appearance of me be a thing because I know the confidence I draw from doing this, no client is going to be a challenge to talk to because talking to clients wasn't my biggest fear. Pricing and negotiation wasn't the things I was scared of. For some reason, it was this camera. And I wanted the channel of our 300 subscribers one, because I didn't want to do the work of getting the 100 again. The first 100 is the hardest. But I was like, I can turn this to 11. I can do the stuff that I've kind of had in my mind that I've kind of dreamed of. I not have it so broad. I can niche it down to fit me. And when I did that, the areas and expert, the things I talked about, I was much more confident in. And it took me 16 minutes to record a five minute video. And then it took me 10. And now it takes me like seven minutes to kind of sit down and do a one take and kind of keep things going. And it feels different because I am more confident because I kind of pivoted to the things that I enjoy. So that was one big thing that I took away from it. It was the confidence. The second had to be the financial management of it. I don't believe I have an emotional connection to money. So when I tell a client a price and I use, you know, your strategies and I use the methods that you've taught me, I just sit back and let them speak because my urge and my want was always like, but if that's too expensive, you know, we can, we can, we can work something out. And I'm like, no, because when I got my first little bit of success with that, I was like, I can say any number I want to, can I? And I can, I can kind of keep pushing. And recently, about five, six months back, I met with a client and I was like, hey, you know, I just want to let you know before we continue in our conversation, before we like dig too deep on the relationship piece, 30 second videos that I usually do that inquire like a day or two of shooting usually range between like 14 and $8,000. Is that something that you're really comfortable with? And they were like, yeah, that's fine. And in that moment, I was like, oh my God, I anchored too low again. Even though this number is four times higher than anything I've ever charged, it's still too low because I'm, I, I just need to keep adding more and more confidence and getting to those bigger and bigger numbers because what you told me and this is post breakup when we first came down you were like you you can't do the hunt you can do the hundred twenty thousand dollars commercials but one i don't have the confidence to say the number <laughs> two nobody can find you because you're not doing the work and i'm not putting myself out there and so turn my brain off and i'm just like I'm just gonna put myself out there. And I'm gonna say a number that's big for me. It doesn't have to be a Chris Doe number, but it's gonna be big for me. And it's gonna be life changing for me. And they were just like, yeah, that's fine. I'm like, that's no problem. I'm like, oh, okay. There is so much untapped potential. And I live in a relatively small city, but there's so much untapped potential that the only thing holding me back is my fear. Getting past that and getting the confidence to talk to clients was another thing. And the third was immediately not doing the work. The first thing I did was when I got enough money, 
I brought somebody in to do the work. I started outsourcing immediately because I could I could grind the work out, but I had seen what we did for Mox and keeping everything internal, trying to keep the profit to ourselves really just keeps the profit away from you truthfully. So the first thing I did was bring somebody on who can help me, who can help, not a partner, but somebody who can actually help me load and unload camera gear. And then I needed a blank slate that I could mold into cutting videos exactly the way that I do it so I can just kind of duplicate myself. And over the past two years, I've been teaching an editor and he can now fully do it on his own now. And he can do any and everything that I request. And at the moment, I'm doing what you told, what you call closing the gap. I got him to 60% and I would take the 40, which means I'm doing 60% less of the work in a video edit. Then I got him to 80, 90, 95. Now the only thing I do is I transfer the footage and make files. I hand him an edit. He hands me a colored rendered, I mean a color, full colored file. I check for small mistakes and then I send it to the client. And they say, oh my God, you guys are incredible. You do such great works. I love your editing, Chris. And I'm like, ha 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 ha, I didn't edit it. But it's not up to you to know that. And I've been trying my best to outsource more and more because I've seen what outsourcing gives me the capability to do. And it's been exceptional. It's been the only way I've been able to hit the numbers and the current number that I have to keep up with the capacity that we're doing. I'm having to give a little bit of work away to get so much more in return. Whew. Taking notes here. <laughs> the future does not issue certificates or plaques or degrees or diplomas or anything like that. But we probably should, given what you just said. Like if I had an honorary <laughs> degree to give to you, I would, Chris, because you did everything you're supposed to do. You built yourself up brick by brick. You faced your demons by staring at that one-eyed beast known as the lens. It's a heartless monster. It, it will see right through you and it will expose everything you hate about yourself. But you kept going and going until you could tame the beast. And in doing so, you found your voice and you found yourself. That's number one. Number two, you learned to talk about money in detached ways and you discovered that you had this power that you only needed to believe in yourself and that generally speaking if you have the skill set which you obviously do the next biggest hurdle is you getting comfortable talking about numbers and then just trusting the process anchoring high price bracketing you're using everything that we talk about in our channel and and the key is you're implementing it to perfection staying silent, letting the clients say what they need to say. The last thing is you also realize the super important thing that if you keep everything to yourself, you never really grow. And people don't understand when I say this, but obviously you do. Being an entrepreneur is synonymous with being a great teacher, not leader, teacher, right? So in order for you to grow your business, you have to teach other people, your systems, your process, the way you look at the world and your client gave you the biggest compliment as a teacher saying, nice edit, Chris. And you're like, ding. Yeah, I know. Because you trained another person, you gave them skills, which they can take with them for the rest of their lives. You've enriched that person's life on a skill set level, but also financially, because now they have a job, they have opportunity, and they have more opportunity to learn from you. Your true test for the graduate degree is when you say to me, my, my, the people who shoot for me, the people who edit for me, they're actually better than me, Chris. 